personally. So we got everything lined up here. We're going to take a quick peek at how they manage their early invades and early setups. Oh, also, I forgot to mention overall team fights. Uh, I'm going to have to give this over to blue team. And my reasoning is, is they have a lot of protection to protect the Kogma. They have the altered version of Nar to knock people back, stun them, do all sorts of things to keep people locked down. They have the Braum to just be a giant meat shield and not let anyone get to Kogma. They have the Oriana alt, sorry, not the Oriana alt, the, oh, they have the, oh my god. They have the Evelyn alt to lock, pe the lock down the back line or to stop and initiate, and they have the Cassiopeia alt to again disengage and, and pop people. So they have a very good possibility to make Kogma an unstoppable rage beast in the mid to late game. But on the split side, the pick potential from the opposite team, Zed is terrifying, right? He has, he has advantage in the lane. In lane, he should win. If he gets ahead, then he's going to be able to kill Kogma, or he's going to be able to kill Nar, or he's going to be able to kill Evelyn. He's going to be able to take out whoever is the threat this game, assuming he wins lane. And then they have the Lee Sin Oriana combo with Renekton just being a huge, huge bully. And then they have Corky for, well, bullying. Range, range burst bully caster. It, Corky's such a weird champion where he's got burst at relatively short range with his Q auto attack, alt auto attack sort of thing. Um, but then he also has some decent poke with his alt. So he, he has various options. Okay, so I'm going to actually pay attention to the top lane early. And my reasoning here is because, well, it's it's so snowball-y. Either Nar falls behind and Renekton snowballs off of it, or he positions perfectly and it goes against him. Now, this is pretty much what I was saying might happen. If you let Renekton get to you, he's going to win the trade and he has the sustain to stay pretty much ahead. So I want to see him trying to, to push out a little bit, try and get level 2. And now that he's level 2, now he can worry about harass. Because using your passive on your W, you're going to be able to reposition properly. Hey, Ty Barn! Yes, workshops are back. Right, finally has Spectator working properly. Alright, so he's about to evolve. That's your sustain, Esnar, is constantly trying to swarm, uh, swap forms as often as you can. So during that uh, stun, I think you could have stepped forward and queued, and you, you probably would have got some good damage in there. Instead, he's just opting to push this out. Lee Sin is now here, though, and oh, that's going to be close. Gets the flash, but nothing else. Down in bot lane, there's the support Orianna. Yes, it died. I'm so happy. Um, yeah, let, I'll, I'll rewind that, but it's pretty obvious what happened here. Orianna, trying to auto attack Ras, throws the shield down, but... Your shield just isn't going to be useful without AP. So now you're standing directly in range. Kogma auto attacks. Like, yeah, you. I don't know if you're lagging or what's going on there, but you're allowing them to walk straight up to you and kill you. So that's, that's not ideal. Back to mid lane, because that's going to be another snowball lane. It's all the pressures on Cassiopeia here. She needs to avoid dying. She needs to avoid falling in any way behind, or it's going to snowball out of control for for the lane. I'm sorry, I'm very biased towards my supports because I play so much support. And there it is. So, this is what we expect with Nar. He's ranged, he does percentage health damage, he's got mobility. If he can avoid getting caught by Renekton, this is what should be happening every time Renekton comes to lane. The problem with Orianna is that she is not a support, but she's also not a kill lane because she doesn't set up kill potential, but she also doesn't set up utility without gold. All 
Honestly, I could probably think of a dozen bad supports that are still better than Orianna support. Alright, so Braum's actually landing a lot of these Qs. Uh, unfortunately, we, we've been trying to keep an eye on some of the more snowbally lanes, but really good job on him proccing these and uh, allowing Kog'Maw to just dominate this lane. Yeah, Brand support is definitely better than Cassiopeia. Sorry, than, than Orianna support. Hell, I would say Cassiopeia support's better. Galio support's a better version. Yeah, Galio support's terrible, but it's still better. Anyways, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep on that track. I don't want him to feel attacked as a player. He's welcome to his opinion. He's welcome to play Orianna support. But I don't. I'm not required to think that it's a good pick. Let's take a quick look mid. Cassiopeia constantly pushing up, getting very low mana as a result. I understand that you do want to try and uh, apply as much pressure as you can, but you also then need to be aware of your resources. You didn't need to flash there. He didn't have alt. If he's not level 6, he can't kill you. He doesn't have ignite, doesn't have alt, so the E auto attack wouldn't have been enough to finish you off. And if he chased for two turret shots, you could have ignited him and he would have died. So I actually would have not flashed there and possibly gotten a kill. Alright, so, issue with Evelyn there. She walked too close to the tower. She got spotted by it. Just as a reminder, it shows an exclamation mark over your head when you're detected. So she walked through here, and tower detection rating is something like this. I, I could be wrong on that, but either way, I, I saw an exclamation mark, so she got detected. Back in top lane, uh, he has beat him to level 6, but not really able to get anything from it. If I were you, I might be trying to stand sort of down here. If he comes in range, stun, throw towards the wall, auto attack, Q, auto attack, and hell, you can jump on top of him at the same time if you want. And I, I think that you would have been able to, to... Not necessarily that you're going to get all that onto him, but it would have been the ideal position for you to be in to pressure him out of lane. So Cassiopeia is still mid here. She's level 6. Oh, nice job. Gets onto Zed, the Ignite takes him down. Eve is here for the cleanup. And this is what you like to see from Eve. She can clean up fights really, really easily. I don't like I don't like luck support, but it's still better, yes. Anyways, I, again, we're done with that topic. I'd appreciate it if we'd sort of move on. Uh, so <laughs> that went quite heavily in mid's favor. They got a two for one. Evelyn got a kill, and Cassiopeia got a kill. And, and an assist. So good job. Alright, Renekton tries to initiate, gets a lot of damage on. He evolves, not able to connect with his stun, unfortunately. Uh, but he can just alt away and walk to safety. So, let's rewind that. I want to do slow-mo here and see what should have happened. Okay, so, Re Nara knows he's about to evolve. So, he's auto-attacking a minion, but he's putting himself in free position to get engaged on by Renekton. So, instead of that, I want to see you standing more over here. Then if he's going to dash before forward, you have warning, and he's going to end up right sort of where you are. So take a step off to the side into the bush even if you need to. Again, you're about to evolve. So step back into the bush, Q towards him, auto attack, jump over which will evolve you, ult him into the wall, stun him into the wall, auto attack, Q, auto attack, you just got a kill. And again, that, that's an ideal play. Instead, he pushes himself back out into lane, misses his stun, and then is forced to use his alt to just like run to safety. So that, that's not necessarily what you want to see happen. So Cassiopeia going for Rod of Ages build. I like that. I want to see her also picking up an arm guard because she's going to constantly be dealing with both Zed and Lee Sin. I also don't like seeing you stand next to the, the shadow. Because if for any reason he decided he wanted to fight, let's say Lee Sin was looping around, he could just pop to the shadow, auto attack, Q, auto attack, or, or use any combo he wants really, and then still been able to alt after in order to dodge your alt. Oh, Nar actually. Trying to get into their jungle, I don't necessarily agree with that. 
He's got his phage. Um, he's he's trying to go for that early Trinity Force. Looks like. All right, Leeson's just gonna jump over. Nar gets his nice speedy hyper boost and walks back to lane. Down in bot, Braum getting some good damage and uh, marks over on to Corky. Uh, this is just it though. Like, what what's Orianna gonna do? You can shield. You can poke, but then the ball's not in position. You lose their bonus armor, magic resist, and you've just wasted all your mana. So as a result, she's just heavily trying to help out here, and it's just not amounting to much. Alright, so one auto attack, you're now stunned, walk this way, and you should both be able to continue auto attacking throughout this fight. He does have Valkyrie, and he has Flash, and he has heal, so he should be fine. Uh, Oriana then decides to alt, sorry not alt, exhaust. Alt comes across from Braum. Summoner heal used by Corky, and Oriana is still in a bad position. Flash is out. Flash was not needed though, because as you saw, blue team was backing out. So don't rush your summoner skills. Don't connect to fights you don't want. I think is the, the lesson we can take from that fight. Right, so even initiating with her alt there. Don't agree with that. I, I, unless Kasupi is immediately able to follow up with a stun, I, I, you're not going to be able to duel him yourself. That's a long cooldown. That's uh, 120 seconds. I would say that. Nice. Right, so now Eve's coming top. Again, tries to duel on her own. It's not doing anything for you. If you cannot get a kill on your own, go farm. Right? She's spending so much time camping these lanes. And while this gank might work out... Alright, so he da he dashes in. That's a free, free engage for Evelyn now. Good job staying. I like this decision. My my complaints have only been about, like, oh, why are you initiating when no one's here to follow up? In this case, there is. Nice flash stun coming out from Nar. Gets the kill over onto Evelyn. Evelyn has her red buff and is ready to, to go make some friends. Yeah, take away that. Leave the small one up. Good job. Alright, so, here we need an Orianna alt off of Lee Sin. So, I want to see shield going over. Zero seconds, good. So, shield should be used right now. Oh, it could go on to Corky, but, yeah, Lee Sin. Lee Sin has a ward jump, he has his flash. Instead, looks like they're just going to go on to Braum instead. Unless you can get a perfect combo here. No, not able to land your Q. So at the end of the day... Oh. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. Okay, so. Three main issues here. We're going to rewind and watch. We'll, we'll watch the rest of the fight in a second. Okay, so. Number one. You see Lee Sin is coming. You need to get in position to follow it up. So Corky needs to walk straight down to this bush. That's where he's going to be walking towards. Oriana wants to walk up towards Lee Sin, so she can get the shield onto him as soon as possible, but again, hurting them in. Uh, not grouping together so that they can't alt you, they can't disengage with, like, Goo or Brahm alt, which uses in a second. Corky jumps in, but the uh, the Oriana ball is already going on to Lee Sin. Corky's landing some good damage. Nice ward, actually, from Corky, but seems to have uh, stopped for a second instead of continuing to walk. At this point, Lee Sin go on to Brahm, right? It's free kill. Take it. And move on. This would be a very flashy play, yes. Uh, and instead, Rom jumps out of the Orion Alt. Orion Alt is wasted. That's just unfortunate. They need to focus the same targets. Ping, make sure your team's on the same page, and then go for it. So here's Evelyn trying to get on to... Oh, there we go. Between Zed and Corky, they actually do take down Evelyn. Teleport coming in behind from Nar. So let's see if they can do anything with that. It seems unlikely, though. The only person in danger here would be Lee Sin. Keeping in mind that the alt has already been used by Orianna. Auto attack. One down. Two down. You want to be moving between these auto attacks? Alright, so there's three auto attacks. You got nothing there. 
The only the only real hope you had there was uh, Kogma being able to help out. I I don't know. I, I just think that was sloppily played. And in the meantime, Renekton just pushing this down. I like that decision on his part. Take a free tower for your team. Alright, so no new items on her, which is surprising. How much gold does she have? Yeah, she has 3.9k, so she hasn't gone back yet. Alright, Nara's actually chasing in a hell of a long way. Oh, okay, so he actually could have got the third attack there. He was one attack away, auto attacker Q would have allowed him to continue chasing, and would have chunked him down. Uh, I think he could have got that. I definitely think you could have got that. Instead, Lee Sin is coming in. You're opting to go in after the fact. Lee Sin has his ult, so quick Q and follow up. You still have your ult if you needed it. He does not connect as he's jumping, but it doesn't matter. Renekton should just be able to auto attack here. Nope. Poor pathing. Use attack move. Use attack move. You won't make mistakes like that. And there's the kill. Uh, Eve sort of dancing around top, not gonna mean anything. Free tower over to red team bot. Alright, uh, this should amount to a free dragon as well. The only concern, look at where people are on the map. Your jungler's in base, your top lane's in base, you see at least one person mid, you see at least one person bot, and your low health. So, you don't necessarily want to do this, but with the teleport, they can. They just need to be on the same page though. Alright, so they take that away. It's risky to do without your jungle, though, especially versus an Evelyn, who could be anywhere unless you have it pinked. Alright, so Evelyn is camping bot. Not sure if they've seen her yet. Okay, so she just showed herself. Uh, that means that you've just lost the advantage here. Um, Evelyn is not very good at tower diving because she doesn't have hard CC. Her damage is sort of over time and chase potential, then burst. So not necessarily what you want to have happen. Oriana going for a tier. Don't like that. If you're going to go for an Oriana bot, get your Frost Queen's claim fully upgraded. Make sure you have your Sight Stone. And then you're probably going to want to go towards something like Morel and Omicron, because it's cheap, cheap cooldown reduction. Alright, so Lee Sin and Corky going on to Brom. Brom ults them up in the air as Corky, well, continues to just machine gun. Eve is here, though, with the ult. Slows them. Kog'Maw not actually following up this engage, which is a little odd. You need to be pinging your fights, because I think Kog'Ma should have been in range for this. Alright, so here, Oriana wants... Oh, but she doesn't have one. Okay. I was going to say, oh my god, a chance where she might be useful. Alright, so there's the Corky Rockets picking up a free kill over for himself. So, the issue here is they weren't all on the same page. They landed a good re-engage, but Cor sorry, Kog'Ma was not in range. They were not on the same page, and therefore nothing comes from it. In the meantime, they do get the kill on to Brom, but here's the snake. So spooky. Okay, so that's a kill over to her. Oh, she actually missed her poison. What? Yeah, so she missed her poison, and therefore did not get to E. He's alting in Q, E, yeah. Yeah, you're dead. You're dead, Kog'Maw. So this is pretty much the same complaint I had about last game, actually, where they have the easy potential to win these fights, they're just not on the same page. They're not communicating, they're not working together as a team. And, and that's my, my main concern. So if, if I could suggest anything for blue team, it's play towards your strength, which in this team comp is protect Kog'Maw. 
if Kogma is not joining the fight, you're not doing your job, right? Or Kogma is not doing his job. You can place the blame wherever you want. Blame is not the problem. The problem is, is making sure that you actually get the kills, that you're on the same page. Stun goes across from Nar. Slow comes across from Eve. Flash comes out, and Renekton should be able to just walk away. So Rod of Ages and Tear finished up by uh, Cassiopeia. Pretty good build, actually, because she does get returned mana from her E. Best boots for Evelyn? Probably Mobies. You have a lot of options, though. Like, you're not, you're not pigeonholed into only Mobies as jungler anymore. But because she wants to roam around the map fast and uh, just show up and surprise people, Mobies are usually a good option. How many stacks of passive does Cass have? Uh, 180 something. Alright, so Eve got caught out way back up here. It took him a while to collapse and kill her. As Eve, you definitely do need to keep that in mind though. Ooh, all not able to stun anyone here coming out from Cassiopeia. Alright, so remember, your team comp is based around Protect the Kog'Maw. You need to be pretty much just focusing on him. Alright, so you need to give up this tower. There's no way for you to hold it. Is this the last game? Probably. Alright, so Orion is coming in from the side. That has some good wards on purple team. I want to compliment that. Yeah, Caspia needs to be getting poison stacks, or she's not going to scale. Why well, not stream on Saturday? Because I don't stream on Saturdays. That's not a day we stream. Yeah, I work, plus it's my day off. It's both. Alright, so she does have her alt there. I'm surprised she didn't use it with Nar coming in from the side and about to evolve. If she had s slowed them here, they would have not been as far out, and Nar would have been able to then alt into the wall. Then stun across. Auto attack, Q auto attack is probably what i go for here. Yeah, see now she alts, but it's a little late on that. Kogma is not here for this fight. Brom, yeah, okay, that's perfect trajectory on his alt. They need to take out Zed. Zed has to be first focus here. Great job they pick up the Orianna. Zed taken to about half health so far. Huge, huge burst going on to Eve though. Once her alt is used and it, he's taken enough damage, she's done, right? At that point, you need to just be chasing targets. You can't actually stay in a team fight. So, same complaint. You have no Cassiopeia there, you have no Kog'Maw there. They are your damage. Um, if they were able to set this up still inside tower by leading with the Evelyn, following with the Nar, then that would have been different. They might have been able to fight that. I agree that they should have been able to take out Zed there, but with everything being grouped so closely together, it's possible they were not able to get onto the right target. It's also worth keeping in mind that once Nar has used his combo, he doesn't have a whole lot of sustained damage. Obviously, yes, his Q is sustained damage in that it resets very quickly, but it's not as though that is a burst skill. It does not scale overly well. Uh, so he's pretty much waiting on his Triforce procs at that point by Q autoing, and unless he gets that auto onto Zed, Zed's probably going to live. Same with Braum. Braum doesn't have burst. Evelyn doesn't have burst. She only has sustained damage, and she was taken down relatively easily. We've looked into Patron before. Um, 
I don't think we're large enough. Right now we focus on subscriptions and donations in order to support us. It's a good system. It's just... I, don't, I think we would need a lot more people to justify trying to do something with Patreon. Or Patreon, or whatever they want to call it. Alright, so this time Kog'Maw is actually here. So this is a fight I want them to try and go for. Nara is busy bullying uh, Renekton. He can do that. He can do that very, very well. But the rest of your team needs to be on the same page, protecting Kog'Maw, and forcing fights that you actually want. No, that's 220 stacks. Same as Nasus. Uh, it cuts off the third digit. So Kog'Maw does not have much. Oh, very nice alt from Orianna and Lee Sin. Zed following through, getting directly onto Kog'Maw. Brom tr knocks them up. Don't know if Kog'Maw is going to be able to live through that. He should be able to. Okay, so Cassiopeia has already used her ult, but is going to be able to combo onto Zed very, very, very quickly. That's a hell of a lot of damage. In the meantime, Lee Sin is taken down. The rest of them are still sort of stuck. Now that Nara is here, though, oh boy. That's going to be a hell of a lot of CC. This is what happens when you protect Kog'Ma, though. They dove in. They were forced to go so, so deep to try and get to Kog'Ma. And even with that very nice 3 ban Ori ult, with the kick out, it doesn't matter. They're going to be able to pick up a lot of kills here. So that is a 1 for 3. And that's with purple team having essentially a perfect engage. And that's with blue team playing it not poorly, but they could have definitely done better there. Uh, unfortunately, Corky just bursting them down. Nara not quite able to finish off the kill. Kog'Maw gets the kill, though. So that's nice. Yeah, that Corky. Whew, he was close. You have to remember that Kog'Maw has not even started taking effect yet. With a Kog'Maw, you want to farm and stall the game for 30 plus minutes, generally. Same with Cassiopeia. You do not want to fight. They need to protect them, force the enemy team to fight, and simply stall the game. And that's why I'm wanting to see them group, protect Cog, and, well, stay under their turrets. But they can only do that if they're together. Alright, so Cassiopeia getting a couple extra stacks there, but nothing crazy. They're about 250 stacks right now. Alright, so luckily for her, she now does have her CDR according to this. Hey, Zen. Alright, Cassiopeia, you want to be back a little bit further. You want to be behind Braum and Evelyn, generally. I know it's tempting to try and get those stacks, but like if you get zeroed out, the fight's pretty much over. Alright, so Nara's applying pressure top. This is what you want. Eh, I want to see him keep pushing, actually. So, you don't actually want to initiate this fight unless they split up, and they are. So they're sending two people top. You want to engage on the remaining three people. This is your engage opportunity. 4v3. Alright, Nara needs to be getting out, though. As soon as you see them abandoning this fight, Nara needs to start running. He overstayed by a lot. Hmm. Yeah, he's gonna get out, but... Per sorry, blue team's just not doing anything with these. Yeah, they're trying a little too hard to catch someone in the jungle, when all they needed to do was, as soon as they saw them start to split up, engage. Engage onto the remaining people, and they would have a chance. And that should be something that Cassiopeia and Evelyn are working together on. Evelyn needs to be scouting with her stealth, constantly in beside or behind the enemy team, so that as soon as they see an opportunity to fight, she pings the fight, drops her alt, and then Braum, Cassiopeia, etc. can lock down targets.
Mm, with Evelyn top. All right. Good poke coming out from Nar. He's actually been been playing very well. I'm actually a little bit confused by the boots lucidity on Cog uh not Cogma. Ugh. On Braum, I'm a little bit confused about the lucidity boots. He could be going Mobies if he was roaming around, he could be going Merc Treads if he's being CC'd, he could be going Ninja Tabby if he's being auto attacked. And there's a lot of AD on the enemy team. I, I just find it a little bit odd. Alright, so Nara's probably gonna be taken down. But again, this is this is what blue team should want. So, a lot of damage going across. That is a dead... Oh my goodness. Renekton taken down super fast. No one's able to get over onto the carries, though. In the meantime, Nara's just recalling in their base. Ooh, that's ballsy. Lee Sin, actually gonna be... Ah, oh, three, not four marks. Nara makes it out. Very nice. Stun goes across from the final Q... Let's see if Cass can get anything here. Nope, kick goes across. Oh, okay, you need to back out immediately here. All right, ooze across here if you can. Cass has alt, actually. This is a very good choke point where you could alt. Mm, if they had comboed that engage, they might have been able to get, like, all of those kills. It would have been risky, though, so I understand why they didn't. Alright, so Nara just going ham. Zed going in, taken down almost immediately. Whew. Two for one, very nice job. So this is going to free up a lot of pressure on the map. They should be going for Dragon, that's, yep. Yeah, they're actually pinging it, good job. Alright, free Dragon! All thanks to that Nara play, very nice job. Again, a lot of people are pointing out in chat like, oh my god, he's actually not doing that much. No, no, he, he's doing his job. He Deaths don't matter as a top laner as long as you're accomplishing something with them. Alright, um... Not sure why you're trying to, to sort of initiate that there, Braum. Because Evelyn doesn't have the damage to duel a Zed and an Orianna. You, your, again, primary focus are Cassiopeia and the uh, Dark Maw. Alright, so now he's doing the exact same thing, just shoving in top. Blue buff, going over... Pogma, I guess? No. No one seems to be taking the blue. They're all dancing around it, and no one's taking it. Alright, so no one wants it. They actually do take down Nar. So, them just sort of dancing around blue... Oh my god, okay. Kogma is able to flash out, but why he's over here while Braum's up here, rest of the team's down here, that is a poor decision. Oh, this engage though is beautiful. Okay, so what they did there, I'm actually going to pause this for a second. Okay, so this is, first first mistake is you're all dancing around blue buff while Nara's trying to start a fight for your team. Now Braum is trying to start a fight where, well, Cassiopeia is here, but your AD carry is down here. Your AD carry is in the middle of the open. So that's like, what, three, four misplays? But what I want to compliment... Okay, so he gets caught. He panics. Oh my god, I gotta get out of here. He's like, okay, I'm gonna get killed here. So he moves over towards Baron. Flashes into Baron, and here's where it gets really nice. You see the entire enemy team try and come across. Braum jumps in front to provide the shield and the extra resists. They're all grouped around Baron. She can then drop the alt, get a shield off of everyone, and aggro Baron where they're all stuck in the pit and slowed. Brahm has his alt, so he should be alting right now. Alright, so he's not alting yet. Alright, so he alted a little late. I would have liked to see them trapped in the Baron pit. At the end of the day, though, it boils down to the same thing. Cassiopeia is now coming across, still has her alt. Mm, alt's not necessarily stunning people there, but still a really, really good play. What I want to see though, Cassiopeia, are you able to land damage across this? 
They're not chasing it in when this is definitely a fight they want. They're all running away from it. They didn't seem to realize the engage that they just did. And uh, that's something I would like to see these people working on in the future, because that was a free re-engage. Just as soon as you saw the Eve ult, everyone should have been comboing on top of that, being like, GG, we just won the game. Because they could have immediately aced, got Baron, and the inhib in that, possibly. Uh, inhib might have been a stretch with the respawn timers, but oh my god, they should have got so, so much from that. At the end of the day, though, great job. They got what they needed to. Alright, so I like Brom's decision here. He's standing in front of Baron, so that the Q will go onto him instead. Uh, looks like he might have slightly misplayed that, but it doesn't matter. They get the they get the Baron, and they also get the kill onto Lee. Hey there, Requiem. Alright, we're gonna fast forward this a bit. Oop, I accidentally paused. Okay, so... Here we have Nar able to engage from the side, we have Eve able to engage from the side, and you have cut off two of them. This is the engage you want, all directly across here on Braum, and it would have bought time to collapse onto Orianna and Zed. Now, Zed may have been able to escape that, but you still have your Cassiopeia alt ready to go if they dove onto your main grouping. Alright, good Braum re-engage there. Nar is in a very good position to clean this up, good job. With their team comp, I'd be a little bit more preferential for them um, splitting teams rather than AoE engaging on teams. But either one works, and they, they opted for a slightly safer route, so that's fine. And Cassiopeia is now at 330 stacks. So she's definitely getting there. As you can see, she's got 609 AP. She's doing a lot of damage. Once she gets her Archangels, that's going to be insane. Ooh, actually. Alright, so I'm going to point out the importance of wards. Oh my god. So they warded over the wall. And they're just like, wait a second. We can see them moving in on that. Oh, she could have ulted sooner, actually. Alright, so they, they move back onto it. Alt, Kiri, free kill. They, they could have done that and picked up Corky instead of Orianna. But still, I, that, that's why warding over walls when you're sieging fights is super important. Beautiful alt coming out from Nara. Alting them back into the turret and the inhib. Stunning everyone up and doing a ton of damage. So they should be able to get inhib off of this. There's no real risk to this. So just take away the base. Hey, Lee, you're a little too close there, buddy. Alright, so you have minions here. You could end. Instead of focusing champions, you could actually just end the game here. You have 15 seconds on Zed. Uh, the Orion ult actually comes through doing a lot of damage. Eve is a little too close, taking tower aggro and exhausted inside of it. Okay, so you need to make sure that you're only eating poison targets. That's un 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 bleh, that's very important, is what I'm trying to say. And that, unfortunately, just costs you the ability to end that. That's fine, though. They're still going to win, I would say. It, it would be a, a relatively heavy throw for them to, to lose at this point with how well they've scaled and how well they're now playing. Alright, so they opt to take away Dragon from themselves. This is risky. Oh my goodness. If anyone had come here, they would have been able to immediately stop her. But they don't, so free Dragon. Alright, so both Evelyn and Nara still split pushing. Nara now has Banshee's Veil. Huh. I suppose that makes sense. Yeah, between Banshee's Val and Randwins, he's gonna be super tanky. So this fight just boils down to they engaged. There's, there's nothing really to say about it. Past, well, they landed and engaged, they won. 
Nice attempt at assassinate, but not... Oh, no, the ignite goes through. Last tick, not able to take them down. Oriana only able to connect onto Cassiopeia. All right, stun goes through as uh, Oriana was marked by Braum. Nara flashing over. Is he going to be able to finish it? His E is up right now. Jumps forward, gets the triple attack, triple kill. Is he going to be able to get the Penta? No, he's going to walk into tower and die. The greed. Okay, so, Kog'Maw is down in bot. With him not here, this fight is not something you necessarily want. Yeah, I get that he wants to clear out the lane there, but you're standing on top of an Oriana Ball on an aggroed Baron. Oriana actually ult right, ulted right here, and then dub. Mm, yeah, her W's already used. She may have been able to kill Cassiopeia with her help. She's waited too long now, they're they're retreating. Alright, so now that Kogma has cleared out the bot lane, they should be able to try and uh, take this Baron. Or just end the game, either one would work. Same strategy as before, Nara provides distraction, rest of them just push. Both carries are without their peel. Rom, you want to be with that, bud. Right, so Zed tried to jump in, I'm not sure what he expected to happen there. Uh, Prom re-engages with his ult, and they pick up the kill onto Zed. They try an ult on Corky, not gonna happen. Alright, so Braum in good position here to block every bit of incoming engage. Cassiopeia has flash ult, so if they try and come in, she can reposition to, for an escape, or to re-engage with her ult. Either one will work. Ugh, oh, that gnar. Nara is so beautiful this game. Alright, so Kogma a little bit too close, but he should be able to do fine here. Stun goes across onto Koroki. Kogma taken down. Cassiopeia. Um Fun, where's your ease? Cassiopeia, you need to work on your combos a bit. Because they were standing in poison, it looked like, or you had poison up. And yet you didn't seem to be chasing and re-engaging. Like again, you just got poison onto them and you didn't E. One E. E, step back, E, step back, E, Q, or sorry, Q, E, step back, and you would have had a double kill, and then been able to re-engage at will onto the third. Because, like, you're, you're full health. You seem very, very scared to fight. Alright, so Cassiopeia now going way too close without her team, and gonna get taken down. I'm just going to fast forward this, try and get through to, to something useful. Alright, so we have three people grouped, you need your team together. Okay, so now that you have Kogma and Braum and Evelyn all grouped, they can try and push an end. Alright, Cass is coming up too. Alright, again, this strategy worked right with Braum, but the rest of your team needs to end. You have both in hibs, you can see them all <laughs> moving up top. Why are you hitting minions? You could just walk into their base and kill the Nexus. Right? Wait, wait, is that what they're gonna do? Oh my god. Alright, so it looks like they're gonna end the game here. Alright, so Rengar 
Not Rengar, but Nacten. That's what I'm trying to think of. Nacten gets stuns in the middle. No champions get ulted by Orianna. Good. <laughs> uh, Nar. Again, more good alts. Not able to stun them this time, though. Kogma just do and work on to this Renekton. Cassiopeia ult not necessarily connecting on everyone you wanted it to, but it still worked fine. Cass, you want to Q-E-E-W-E-E. -E -E -E. Again, W on top of Kogma so that when they jump in, they're already going to be poisoned. Um, yeah. You shouldn't have lived that long, but you're going to be fine. You, you got this. Oh, Kogma. You should not have lived there. Alright, Corky takes down the Nar, triple kill goes over to Kogma, and they end the game. I was group coaching ineffective FBI and pointing out mistakes that they're making and ways that they can be improved. That's the point. Okay, so, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do wrap up here. Alright, so taking a quick look at things here, Evelyn had some issues with managing her stealth detection radius, so she may have wanted to, to work on that a little bit more, just in terms of her positioning. I'm also not a big fan of Leandri's on Evelyn. With the AP scaling reduction, I get it, like, Magic Pen's not bad on her, but they've rearranged so much of her damage that I think it's just better to, to go towards tank or AD. She could have gone for Trinity Force or Iceborne Gauntlet if she wanted on next hit damage. It works really well with Q because it's such a spammable skill. Uh, also gives you better chase potential. It, it, it's just better than Leandri's in my opinion. Uh, I also might have liked to see a Banshee's Veil if you were getting zeroed out by, let's say, a Zed or Oriana Alt or anything along those lines. It may have been a little bit more valuable. Overall, though, she did fine. Um, I also would have pointed out, I, or I did point out during the game, that she wanted to work on when to gank. There was a lot of times when she would try and engage a fight where it's like, well, there's no one around to follow up, right? So instead, focus on ganks that you can actually receive a larger advantage from. Summoner skills, kills, large amounts of CS or experience. Those are the ganks you want. Just showing up and being like, meh, I made them scared. That's not necessarily a good gank, right? So that's something that she could work on. Kogma needed to be making sure that he was in the correct position, staying with his team, and making sure that he was sort of in the right mentality for, I'm playing Kogma, I kind of got to stick with the team and they got to protect me. Uh, in the end, though, he pulled it through, he did fine, but he definitely could have been doing a little bit better early game by managing his engages, or, or disengages, I should say, with Braum, Cass, at Eve, that sort of thing. Nar, amazing, amazing job with split push, making sure that his, his team was uh, trying to push advantages while he was drawing attention top, but I think that he still could have done a little bit better in terms of giving well-worded constructive criticism to his team in terms of, hey guys, there's like three people top, Try and take Dragon, push bot, do this, do that. And there's there's a good way and a bad way to say those things, and that's something you're going to learn over time. But I definitely think that he he could have done a little better in that area. Brom, really good work, actually, in terms of just canceling out engages, laying really good alts, chaining his stuns really well. I, I just, he, he did well. I have, I have no real complaints there. The only thing that confused me a little bit was the Lucidity Boots. Why not go, like... Well, first of all, I would like to see a Crucible because, well, you have Kogma, right? But I understand that there's not super, super heavy CC that can be removed by Crucible. So you could have gone Locket, you could have gone Crucible. All of those items have CDR on them. So why, why the Lucidity, right? You could have gone for Ninja Tabby to deal with Corky, Renekton, Zed, Lee, Sin, all of whom do a, di a significant portion of their damage through auto attacks. I think that might have been a, a slightly better option for him. But at the end, he did his job. He did well. I'm simply offering some other suggestions, which he can then take to heart or not. Uh, main things being Locket would have been good. A lot of AoE damage. Um, only reason Locket might not have been ideal is because not a large amount of it was magic damage. The second option being uh, Crucible in order to keep Kogma on CC'd. It does remove Zed Mark, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that one, though. Um, I, and the only reason I understand why he might not have done that is because there's no single target heavy CC besides, like, Renekton. Leeson no longer slows attack speed, so that's not going to be a big deal. But both of those are good things for him to keep in mind. Uh, Corky. 
he did okay. Like, I, I didn't really have any complaints. He farmed well. He positioned okay overall. And uh, he was landing his skill shots. Um, past that, there wasn't too much advice I could offer him. And I'm very sorry to him for not being able to offer more advice. Um, it, it just, there wasn't much I could say about the lane. Oriana, you landed some decent alts. You landed some bad alts. It's Oriana support. I really don't know it well enough to offer advice. The only thing I might suggest is, um... Morellanomicon. Morellanomicon over Seraph's Embrace. Gives you a cheap source of CDR. Gives you healing reduction. Not that anyone's healing that much, but, like, it would have been somewhat useful. And it's essentially a good way to get some AP while still building utility. Um, and getting some mana regen in there. I, I just think Tyr might not have been a good option. I also think that you should have had a Crucible. Uh, Braum was wrecking face with his stuns. And uh, Cassiopeia was landing some stuns. So having Crucible would have allowed you to cancel out one of those stuns, heal some people up, and uh, possibly allow Zed or Corki to just really, really shine in some of these teamfights. I think that would have been a better option. Lee Sin build pretty standard. I've seen a lot more Lee Sin's building damage since his changes, but his team did kind of need a tank. Like, Renekton's a mix of tank and damage, so I mean, like, they had that, but I I'm fine with his build. I, I just think maybe, like, a Last Whisper or a Hydra, like, one, one damage item might have been a good option. You are correct. Only QSS removes that all. You are, you are correct on that. I was trying to remember if it treated it the same or not. But it does, it does heal them, so it helps a lot regardless. Uh, Zed. Usually you build Ghost Blade, not... Like, why do you have a Black Cleaver? I'm pretty sure you still build Ghost Blade on him. And you also don't have Last Whisper. So his item build's a little bit wonky, but it's nothing terrible. I would like to see him roaming a little bit more effectively. Some of his roam really wasn't working out well. I also would... Um, say that he had a lot of issues versus Cassiopeia, just in terms of positioning and lane aggression. I think that Zed should have been able to win that lane much, much easier and harder than he did, simply by playing more aggressively and being confident in his positioning and ability to dodge out of Cassiopeia's poisons. Each Throne, though. Renekton, I would like to see a Hydra so he can cancel the stun animation and uh, improve his wave clear ability. But it's, it's fine. Oh yeah, sorry, back to Zed. He did not need Blade the Rune King and Hydra. Build one or the other. I, I apologize, yes. I, I did not mention that earlier. Yeah, you don't need both. Build one or the other. I think Blade the Rune King is better than Hydra. So you're probably just going to want Blade the Rune King. I also would then say... Um, yeah. Ghost Blade instead of Black Cleaver. Last Whisper. Uh, all would have been good options. But yeah, Renekton should have gone an early... Uh, just not, not even a Hydra, just a Tiamat. Just build a team out and you can cancel out your stuns. It allows you to trade much quicker and efficiently. Because you can cast it while you're using your stun animation. It's just, it's great. It's great on them. So, I think that's about all I can say about the item builds and general playstyles there. If you guys have any final questions for me in chat, feel free to hit me up. If not, I am going to sort of wrap up the stream. I have dinner with my parents tonight. So, I'm going to go like shower and get ready and stuff. So, ask about questions. Oh, Cassiopeia. Did I not go over her items? Oh, I apologize. Her build, is, her build is standard. The only thing that weirds me out is that she didn't upgrade her tier. It definitely was stacked by that point. So I wanted to see that Archangel's finish so that she had that extra line of safety and it would have multiplied her AP a ton. Because, well, like, Rod of Ages and tier, huge mana pool. Could you hang out with me? Um, I don't believe you live near me, so no. Yeah, I agree with you, Tybron. I, I want to see the Seraphs finished a little earlier, just because it's so powerful on her. 